Welcome again to Physics 142. What I'd like to do today is review some of the important results of the Biot-Savar law. And you remember the Biot-Savar law is the equation that tells us how we calculate the magnetic field produced by a current carrying wire at a certain position. And so there are several important shapes of current carrying wires that we want to know the results for. And so one of those is the magnetic field due to a straight wire. Your textbook does the derivation of this result starting with the Biot-Savar law. I would right now like to just remind you what the result is and then after showing several of these special cases use these results to work out the magnetic field for combinations of currents that we might see in practice. So for example one of the more common configurations is a straight wire and here we see in the picture a straight wire we don't worry about where the rest of the circuit comes from but there's current running from point A to point B which is oriented along the y-axis and we want to find the magnetic field due to this segment of wire at point P which is on the x-axis a distance x away from the origin so how do we do that well here's the result that comes from the Biot-Savar law and again the results are worked out in great detail in your textbook so I'm not going to rehash those results right here but it's important to know what this equation tells us. It says that if we define two angles, theta 1 and theta 2, those angles measured from the x-axis tell us where the endpoints A and B of the wire are located. So angle theta 1 takes us from the x-axis to the line AP, and theta 2 takes us from the x-axis to the line BP. And the sine of those two angles, if we take the difference between them, that goes into this expression for the magnetic field B. Of course, the proportionality constant mu naught is always in these kinds of equations, the current strength I in amperes, and then this distance X measured from the origin to point P. This is an important equation. And one of the more important special cases of this is when we have a really long straight wire. And of course, you've, you're used to hearing physicists talk about things that are really long or really big. Basically, what we're th saying is we want to take the limit as the two ends of the wire go off to infinity. Now, of course, there are no such things as infinite wires, but if the length of that wire from point A to point B starts out way down here at the bottom of the page and goes way up to the top, and if that overall length is large compared to the distance x that tells us where the point P is located, this approximation that we work out using angles of negative 90 and 90 degrees will be a good approximation. So then if point A is way, way down at the bottom of the screen, and if it keeps going far, far away, that angle theta 1 will become negative 90 as it goes off to infinity. And the same thing, as point B goes very far up on the screen, way off the screen, and as it gets further and further away, the angle theta 2 will go to, neg to, to 90 degrees. So if we just plug those two angles into the expression for B that comes out of Biot-Savar law, we get a very nice simple result. Mu naught I over 4 pi x, sine of 90 minus sine of negative 90. Of course, the sine of 90 is 1. The sine of negative 90 is negative 1. And so we end up with a factor of 2 in the square brackets. And we get mu naught i over 2 pi x. So this is the mag magnitude of the magnetic field due to a long straight wire, a distance x away from the wire. And that's a simple result that we often will be able to use in a particular kind of problem. Remember that the right-hand rule tells you the direction of the magnetic field at point P. In this case, you might want to take just a moment to figure it out before I go on. Remember the way to do this is you take your thumb of the right hand and point it along the direction of the current. The fingers of the right hand curl around the wire in circular loops that tell you the direction of B at different points in space. So with my thumb along the current direction in this problem pointing from A to B, my fingers curl around the wire and at a point P over here, the fingers of the right hand would be going into the screen. So at point P, B given by this equation would be into the page. All right, let's go on. We see here the results of that right hand rule being applied so that the, th the thumb pointing along the current direction on the right hand side of that current, the fingers would be going into the page. On the left hand side, in the plane of the screen, the fingers would be coming out of the page. And the B makes circular loops that go around from the left side to the right side and then underneath and back again. All right, 
So a side view or a top view of that wire would look like this. The magnetic field lines would form these circular loops all the way around the wire. And that's the result of the right-hand rule. You should be familiar with that and be able to use that to answer simple qualitative questions about magnetic field directions. Let's now look at the magnetic field due to a circular loop, and I worked this out directly from the Biot-Savar law in class. So, just to remind you what the result was. At the center of this loop, the result turns out to be very simple. B is equal to mu naught i over twice the radius. The direction, of course, is again out of the board at the center. And that's because if I put my thumb along the direction of the current, no matter where I put the thumb of the right hand, as long as it's along the direction of the current, the fingers curl around the wire, and inside the loop, they will be pointing out of the screen toward me. So that's the direction of B. There's also, uh, there's also a case where we might want to know what the magnetic field strength would be, not at the center of the loop, but at a point on the axis of the loop. And as the picture shows down here, that would be a distance x away from the center of the loop. And so we can work out from the Biot of our law and the proper application of calculus what that magnetic field strength is. Here's the result. It depends, of course, not only on the distance x, but also on the radius of the loop. And what we can see to check is that this result at the bottom of the screen, if I plug in x equals 0, that would bring the point P to the center of the loop. And so if I plug in x equals 0, I should get back the same answer that I had above for the magnetic field at the center of the loop. And sure enough, it works. Because if x is equal to 0, then I have big R squared to the 3 halves, which in the denominator gives me big R cubed. So big R squared over big R cubed is 1 over R. And that gives me mu naught i over 2R, exactly what we had in the equation at the top of the page. OK, so these results are very important. I'll just go back for a minute to the previous screen. The magnetic field in general due to a straight wire is given by this equation here. The magnetic field then for a very long wire, when those two angles go to 90 and negative 90, is given by this expression. Then once again, at the center of a circular loop and on the axis of a circular loop. So these four equations are useful and will be used by you to answer many of the homework problems. Now what I'd like to do is move on to a simple example here, and then we'll do a little more complicated one. So this first example comes right out of the textbook, and it says, find the magnetic field near the end of a semi-infinite wire at a point P, a distance x from the wire. The wire carries a current I as shown. Now what's a semi-infinite wire? Well, a semi-infinite wire, just like the picture shows, is one that has an end located right at the tip of the arrow, and then it goes off to infinity in the upward direction. So it's semi-infinite. It has an end, but the other end goes off to infinity. So what would be the magnetic field at point P? And I'll stop and move over to my sketch pad and show you how to use the results of the biot savar law to get the answer to this question. OK, so here's the problem that we want to solve. We want to find the magnetic field at point P due to this semi-infinite current that starts at the point indicated at the end of the dashed line and goes off to infinity in the positive direction. So to infinity up there. And I remind you what the results of the Biot-Savar law happen to be for the most general situation. We've got mu naught i over 4 pi x. And then in brackets, we had the sine of theta 2 minus the sine of theta 1. And the sine, the S-I-G-N, of these angles is important. But you can take that general picture and then now look at the specific case we have and see that the point A, which is the bottom end of the wire, is down here. And so theta 1, in this case, is equal to 0. So we'll plug that into the formula in just a minute. Theta 1 is 0. Theta 2, if this is a long wire, semi-infinite wire, if it goes off to infinity up there, then that angle, theta 2, will get larger and larger and will eventually reach the limit of 90. So theta 2 is 90 degrees. And that way we can plug directly into the expression that comes from the Biot of our law and write down the answer. B equals mu naught i over 4 pi x 
the sine of theta 2 is the sine of 90. The sine of theta 1 is the sine of 0. Right? The sine of 0 is equal to 0. The sine of 90 degrees is 1. And so we get mu naught i over 4 pi x. And one thing that we should do is also remember which direction the magnetic field is at point P. All right? So at P, which is what this answer was for, we, we now have the magnitude. What's the direction? You put the thumb along the current direction, and the fingers curl around the current in the sense of the magnetic field, so that at point P, B would be into the page. And so if that's not clear, take a minute, put your thumb along I, curl it around the wire, and you'll see that at a point on the right of the wire, the magnetic field's going into the page. So that's our result. And I'll just remind you, it's interesting to compare this to the result of the infinite wire. The infinite wire, which goes off to infinity in both directions, had theta 2 equal to 90 degrees, but theta 1 equal to negative 90 degrees because point A, the other end of the wire, was all the way at the bottom of the screen and even further. So for the infinite wire, our textbook shows the answer mu naught i over 2 pi x, and that makes sense because that's simply twice the result of the half infinite wire. So if you remember the equation that tells us the magnetic field of the infinite wire and can remember to take half of that, you'll get the answer to the problem like this example. So I'd like to now move on and do a slightly more complicated problem, again using the results that we've gotten from the Bios of our law. Okay, here's one more example where we use the results of the principle of superposition and the results from the Bios of our law to find the magnetic field of a more complicated current configuration. Here we've got a long wire. It's bent into the shape of two straight segments and a semicircular segment of radius r. So the straight segments are segment that I've labeled 1 and the segment that I've labeled 3. And it, it's a very long wire. And so I assume that the top segment comes in from the left from infinity. It's very long. And the bottom segment goes off to the left to infinity. And so we'll use that to simplify our results. Then the semicircular segment is segment 2. And you can see it runs from the end of the top segment, bending around in a semicircular path to the beginning of the bottom segment. Now, the results of the principle of superposition that we've used when we've studied fields, magnetic fields and electric fields, when we find the magnetic fields at point P due to each of the individual segments, we add them up, remembering that they're vectors, and that will give us the total field at point P. So these results have to be at point P. Well. We just did the problem of the semi-infinite straight wire. And we know that B1 and B3 are just like that. And those distances are going to be the radius of the semicircle, r. That's the perpendicular distance from the top wire to the point P and from the bottom wire to the point P. What was that result? OK, when we've got semi-infinite wire carrying current, then we just say that the magnetic field is one half the results of the infinite wire. And the infinite wire was mu naught i over 2 pi times that perpendicular distance. Our formula called it x, but in this case, it's r. And so that gives us mu naught i over 4 pi r. Now that's going to be the magnitude for both segment 1 and segment 3. But what about the directions? And it's important for us to figure those out because we're either going to find out the magnetic field from segments 1 and 3 cancel each other at point P, or perhaps they add together constructively. So let's figure out which it is. Take the thumb of the right hand and put that along current from segment 1, and we'll find that B1 at point P points into the page. You should be able to see that easily by now. Now if you take your thumb and put it along the current in segment 3 and curl your fingers around, you'll find that at point P again, the field is into the page. OK, that's important. 
And so those two results then add up together because they're in the same direction. What about segment two, the semicircular segment? Again, if I put my thumb along the current direction, curl the fingers around that wire, I find that at point P, B is also into the page. So once I know that, all three of these, if I just find their magnitudes, they will add up to give me the field that will then be the total field at point P. So this B for the semi-infinite wire is the magnitude for B1, and it's the magnitude for B3 from segment 3. What about B2? Well, B2, what we have here, is half what we would get for a complete circular loop. Okay, so it's one half of the B for the circular loop, which we found from the Biot-Savart law to be mu naught i over twice the radius of that wire. So this gives mu naught i over 4r. And as a result now, we're almost finished. B total at point P is equal to the sum of these three. Well, we've got B1 and B3. Those are the same, but I'll write them out. Just to make it clear, I'll write them out separately. So this first term is B1. The second term is B2, mu naught i over 4r. The third term is B3. They're all into the page. And so if I just simplify this, well, the first term and the third term add together to give mu naught i over 2 pi r. The curved term from the semicircular segment is mu naught i over 4 r. So again, into the page. And the result, probably all I can do at this point is factor out a mu naught i over 2r. So the first term will give me 1 over pi. The second term will give me, looks like, 1 half. And I could calculate that if I wanted to on my calculator, but it's fine to leave it in this form, but also to include the direction. So the magnetic field at point P is the sum of three terms, which when simplified gives this result into the page. This is the kind of problem that we can do if we remember a few simple results that come from the Biot-Savart law. And again, you've got several problems on the homework like this that make you use those formulas from the Biot-Savart law, but also the right-hand rule for figuring out the direction of the magnetic field produced by a specific kind of current. So, I hope this gets you started on the homework, and we'll have a lot more to say about this in class. I'll see you there.